Hey everybody and welcome to our Facebook Live here at Craft Stash. So if you um, want to have a look um, through the website, there's a lovely array of gorgeous goodies from uh, Indigo Blue. So today what we're going to do is we're going to have a play with our beautiful luscious pigments. So I'm going to show you right from the very beginning, you know, what these are and how these are going to work. So if you've already got some, this is great. So sit down grab yourself a cuppa, get your slippers on and we'll go through some techniques. We're also going to be using our beautiful colour me flowers designed by uh, one of our brilliant designers Janine Gerard Shaw and so we are going to be using these as well. Now if you want to win these, the whole set, all of them, all you have to do is just comment and share underneath this video and you're in with the chance of winning and Alfie will draw uh, a random person out of the hat to win the full set of these um, and we will get those off in the post to you so all you have to do is just comment and share thank you very much so let's get started shall we do you want to come on down and have a look so here we go so this is what we're going to be making it's not all stuck down um, but i want to show you lots and lots of uh, a few different techniques i mean you can get loads of techniques with the luscious but here are just maybe four or five different techniques maybe six or seven something like that anyway shall we get started so what i'm using here is a piece of a watercolor card um, and craft stash will have a lovely selection um, in their shop to have a look at and I'm also going to show you <laughs> sorry about the sound effects in the background that's our uh, dogs sighing <laughs> with pleasure <laughs> um, on the chair um, so I'm going to show you this um, uh, stencil is called circle dots so I'm going to show you how to use the luscious with our slap it on thick okay so this is our sorry it's a really well loved pot of slap it on thick so, so uh, first of all just so you can see comments okay so Alf is just going to give me uh, my phone so I can see the comments coming through and hopefully Alfie will um, put some questions in so I'm just going to say hello to Deborah Jane hello Maggie hello Valerie um, oh you're watching from South Africa fantastic um, that's brilliant thank you so much for tuning in um, this is uh, hello from Deborah Horton Susan Fletcher Trish good afternoon everybody great to see you so first of all, I want to show you what these luscious are all about. So I don't know whether you can see that, but it is a powder. Okay, so the idea behind this was I wanted to give you raw ingredients that we use here um, at the HQ of how we actually have our paints made, okay, and our different products. Now, so this has got pigment in it. Pigment is the color that you get in anything that you buy from the clothes that you wear to the cosmetics you put on your face to the paint you use for painting your house everything that has color has got pigment in it um hi marion hi susan hello dawn and hello melanie from sunny southampton i'm glad you've got some there we've got snow um so we've got pigment in here ground up very 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 finely so you get a lot in the pot you've also got mica in here and you've also got what we call a binder which is what makes it stick basically um so the great thing about it being a binder is the fact that you can use it with lots of lots of different things. So I'm just going to get some slap it on thick out here on my paint mat. Um, but you can also mix it in with anything else. So you can mix it with water to make watercolours. You can mix it with um, slap it on uh, fabric to make a fabric paint. You can mix it with uh, clay, polymer clay. You can dust it over the top of clay. You can mix it with your um, embossing glazes or embossing powders to make coloured embossing powders. There's hundreds of different ways and hopefully over the months i'm going to be showing you lots and lots of different ways of using this so today for this slap it on technique 
uh, through the stencil I'm going to be using Blackbird which is a black which is really useful especially if you want to mix your own colours and also uh, gold as well. Okay so hi Carrie, hi Melanie, um, Australia, hi Vicky, lovely to see you, thanks very much for joining us. Um, yes, um, I believe that Craft Stash do ship to Australia, so no problem there at all. So hopefully you can see this. So this is Blackbird. Now when you mix it with the Slap It On, you can see that this is a white product, but when it dries, it dries completely clear and glossy, which is gorgeous. So it may look a little bit grey at the moment, but when it dries, it will come back to its beautiful black colour. Okay, so I'm just using um, a spatula just to mix that in and I'm using a, uh, one of our paint mats which are fantastic to use because nothing sticks to them. So I can use this to make skins, I can use it as a palette and everything just washes off. So I'm just using a little bit of the gold there and this is mixed in beautifully with the extra thick slap it on so again it's mixing with the white but it will be translucent and clear when it's dry okay so we've got the black and the gold the blackbird and the gold there okay so we use a really really big pot as well because um in the industry normally you would get like the size of the lid which is about five mil because pigment is very expensive okay but we use a really big pot, 25 mil, for the same price. That's because we want you to have really high quality craft products at a really good price. Okay, so that's mixed in beautifully. So now the technique I want to use is a double duo tip. So I take my palette knife, which is just a, a plastic one and on the underside of the palette knife I'm going to put a blob of the black okay so you can see that and then next to it here I'm going to take a blob of the gold okay so we've got two colors on the palette knife at the same time and then I've placed my stencil over the top you can obviously stick it down if you want but I'm just going to go for it and then at a 45 degree angle you just butter it okay and that will take it through the stencil and then I'm going to take another little blob of black and again with the gold so I'm keeping them in the same position I'm not mixing them and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just put another stripe of gold and black okay and then over here I'm going to go again with a little bit of black and then I'm going to take a little bit of gold. All right, so that's mixed in, but that's fine. And I'm just going to cover up some of those holes there that I've missed. Okay, so then we take that off. And we've got a beautiful gold and black stripe. I'm going to come down below here. Now there's still lots left on here. So if I just go over the top of this again, all of that excess will get pushed through the stencil okay and any that's left on my paint mat i'm just going to scrape that off and i'm just going to push that through again 45 degree angle i'm going to take that off and then this is going straight into a bucket of water because the slap it on is an acrylic medium which means that it will dry really quick and it'll dry um hard as well and it's very very difficult to get it off of your stencils can you use it with uv powder can you use it with uv powder uv powder i don't know what uv powder is um but whilst it's wet uh, powder will stick to it so i don't know whether that answers your question at all um if you can elaborate that would be great um i, I guess uv powder is what sets in UV light possibly so I'm just going to put that to dry and then I've got one here that I have already dried okay so you can see now there we go 
So you can see the gold and the black really shining up beautifully there. And also, you can also see, the reason why I've used this is the little tiny dots, which are very, very fine, um, the slap -a goes through really, really well. Remember, this is the slap -a thick. So this is um, the thick one that will hold its structure. I'm just going to move that out of the way as well. And Andrea says, and how then, would you clear up any blobs? And Andrea says, how would you clear up any blobs? Okay, let me get the other one back. So here I've got a couple of blobs. Literally all I do is just wipe that away because the next thing is we're going to cover this with uh, colour. So I wouldn't worry about odd bits like this and also the main aspect of it is going to be covered with that but if you want to be really clean with it I would actually tape it down and then take the stencil off and then tape it down again once this is dry okay so that's that's the best way of doing it and it only takes about 10 minutes to dry I mean that's already starting to skin over so 10 minutes to dry and it's and it's done so a couple of questions so um, a couple UV, of questions UV powder is glowing the dark powder sorry just taking a slurp of my tea um so someone's commented uv powder no, is I'm glowing guessing. somebody's just said glow in the dark powder oh so. is it glow in the dark powder okay so yes it will stick to it definitely and because it's clear then the glow in the dark powder will actually shine through so yeah that sounds brilliant actually the glow in the dark powder is, is slap it on a gesso slap it on is not a gesso uh, slap it on is uh, an acrylic medium that we use um, to make our um, uh, one of the ingredients to make our paints so um, no it's not a gesso we do do a gesso um, which is a really good coverage gesso we have black and we also have white and the difference between ours and other people's is that we actually use um, a really high quality um, level of ingredients and we also use titanium white in the white so that you can see we don't have a white paint we just use the gesso and we use carbon black in the black which means that you get the whitest white and the blackest black um, here as well so those are the gessos that we have can you heat dry so, the super thick so can you heat dry the super thick yes you can absolutely if you heat dry it too much it will start to bubble up like anything that's got water in it but um, you can absolutely heat dry it, just be gentle with it, but it doesn't take long at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually mix some colours. Now the colours I've got here are Sparkling Waterfall, Peacock and Purple. And you saw me spray the background just with plain water because it's watercolour card and I want to show you a lovely simple technique of getting a really gorgeous background Okay, to this. Now... You can use a mat, a paint mat to mix this or you can actually use one of these um, palettes or any palette or even just a normal everyday, let me just move those to the side, a normal everyday plate. Now this is a Tim Holtz one that you can actually get on the website. So it's for um, I think alcohol inks but I find it absolutely superb to use for this. So I've got purple here and the way to make a watercolour out of it is to get your brush, dip it in water and just dip it into the pigment powder. And then you put it onto your plate or your palette and then you just add a little bit more water and you just mix it in. Now, because we've mixed the pigments with water, and remember there's a binder in here so you know it's not going to crack or flake off or disappear at all it is actually going to stick to a surface um, you can actually uh, reconstitute it once it's dry because we're just mixing water with it if you wanted to make it an acrylic paint you would mix it with any of our acrylic mediums including the slap it on range okay so if you want to make um, a gilding wax, you can actually literally mix it with some um, beeswax, which smells rather gorgeous as well, or any other soft wax. Maybe you've got some acrylic wax in your cupboard. Now this one is peacock. Okay, so again, wet brush, 
into the palette and then just mix it. It takes a, a few seconds for the um, granules just to sort of pop and allow the water to sink in. So if you want to do this really quickly, you can actually use a warm water and that will be absolutely fine. Okay, so the peacock, as you might be able to see, is a duotone. So it will change with color depending on how the light hits it. Okay, and then we've also got, this looks amazing. Um, these lushes can be put into resin. We regularly make geodes or like uh, faux opals with this. And this looks amazing. Again, because it's a white powder, uh, a pure powder and very, very fine, it mixes in so well, you know, with your clays and your polymer clays and um, to go over the top of texture paste. That's really cool as well. And of course, you can use it with Versamark or Flitter Glue and dust over the top. So that last colour there was Waterfall, Sparkling Waterfall. We use purple and peacock. Just a question from Leslie, do we do a clear gesso? Do we do a clear gesso? Uh, this is basically our clear gesso, the super thick slap it on. Um, or, and that, that will actually um, go glossy. Or you can use, gesso. yes, I heard you, gesso, yeah. Okay. Or you can use a slap it on matte. Um, basically, it works the same. It gives it a key, especially the matte one. It gives the surface a key and it dries completely translucent as well. And you don't get any um, brush marks at all. You, you have what's called a nice flow rate. So it actually um, works brilliantly as a clear gesso. So instead of us bottling up another one that's very similar to this and call it clear gesso, this is what uh, you can use as a clear gesso. Okay, so you've seen me wet this um, paper down. So now I'm actually going to take my brush and I'm just going to literally daub some colour over these. Where's my purple? There it is. So don't really think about it. I'm going to drip it. So I'm going to mainly put colour at the top. Okay, and what will happen is when we add more water, it will resist the areas of the slap it on because that is basically an acrylic like a it's like having you know plastic and water together and then I'm going to take some of that gorgeous peacock which is a lovely greeny blue and it does actually have a duo tone in so you will see bits of gold coming through with that now I'm using the luscious which is like a cr single cream consistency okay so this works beautifully um, if your uh, yours are looking at a little bit too thin just put a bit more luscious in you've got loads in your pot um, sparkling waterfall let me just clean my brush in with the sparkling waterfall and let's get a big dollop of that as well and don't worry about the colors mixing these are going to just look great and because we use pure pigment actually it's very difficult to get mud as well so i'm going to tip this up so excuse me while i tip this up and then to encourage it to run down you just give it a little spray with your water and let that just cool a little bit okay so bear with me a couple of seconds while we just get that going uh, and just to help it along i'm putting a little bit more purple at the bottom there how are we all doing Peacock is my favourite, says Deborah. <laughs> Jolly good. There we go. So you can see that the colours are so vibrant and beautiful. And the sparkle will come out when it's actually dry. And can you see it's starting to separate away from that lovely stenciling underneath? Um, and then you can see, you can see the gold coming through. There and it will actually pull away from that. If it's not pulling away from that, um, just add a bit more water and then that will just, just float away from there. Okay, so I'm sure you want to see what it looks like when it is dry. Geraldine, so I do just, actually have one here. Just ask what paper are you using? Um, Geraldine, the paper I'm using is a Pink Frog watercolour card. So it's, um, it's fairly smooth, which is really nice. Well, it is smooth, I should say. So it's nice to um, stamp onto, but it also absorbs an awful lot of water and everything. So you can see 
it's never great on a camera, but you can see the beautiful luster you get from those. So this is quite a thin wash. There was loads of water on that. And this one was one that I did with a little bit heavier color. So you can see the color change there. You can see the black and the gold of the circle dot stencil underneath as well. Okay, so that looks really lovely. So really happy with that. So that's a lovely technique. You can do the background without the stenciling and then it looks fantastic. I don't know if I've got any here in front of me. Yeah, so this is a, a like a, a very light wash of one. So that's a really lovely technique. You can do big sheets of it and cut it up and have it all ready for you. Right, so in the meantime, what I'd like to do is introduce you to um, the Colour Me Aster, which I find is really, really lovely. Um, I think all of these flowers are gorgeous. They are quite a nice large size. So these are about four inches by four inches, aren't they, Alfie? Yeah. Um, and we've also got some words as well. So you are so kind on this one. We have perfect, you are loved, brave, perfect, gorgeous. Then we have Colour Me Dandelion, which is make a wish and thank you. And you can see the text is the same so that you can mix and match them. And you are blooming marvellous, um, which is lovely. Okay, so I'm going to use the Aster here. I think this is really, really lovely. And you can see that it already comes mounted onto a rubber um, a cling mount. So we use a, a red rubber and we make these ourselves at Indigo Blue. Let me just grab a mouthful of drink. Excuse me, got a frog in my throat there. Um, so we actually make these here in Nottinghamshire on site. They've got a cling on. So keep your packaging because that acts as um, storage for you. And what I actually tend to do is I put them in these Ziploc bags. So I just slip them in there, maybe two in from the same section. And then if I do knock them in the drawer or anything and one gets knocked off, then they're not going to disappear down the back of the drawer, which <laughs> can always happen with stamps. So that keeps them nice and safe. OK, so we've got some black card. This is black smooth card. This is actually um, a pink frog one as well. Um, but you can use any smooth card. Now with these really beautiful stamps here the detail is very very um, evident you can see these lovely thin lines so in order to get those thin lines i would highly recommend that you use a versifying because i know that versifying work incredibly well with our stamps because of the fine lines if you use um, a distress or a distress oxide you're not going to see the delicacy of the lines you are going to get a different result which is going to look fantastic but it's not going to really show off all those lines so what am i doing here i'm actually using a super fine clear embossing glaze okay we um, give you a really huge pot here because super fine is ground so fine you actually get loads in there um, that's going to last you forever excuse the dog hairs <laughs> which are everywhere in our house. So why do I use a super fine? Because the lines are so fine, you need a really, really small molecule in order to stick on those lines, okay? So what we do is we actually, <laughs> and sighing in the background, we have two happy dogs because they've had a treat um, and they're just cuddled up in the warm. So <laughs> they do sigh from time to time. So here we go. So I'm just going to heat this. And what you do is you just stay on one area until you actually see it. There you go. So it changes. And then you just chase it round like so. Yours might take a little bit longer because I've just got a monster of a heat gun. But I've already got one here, already cut out that we're actually going to use. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there, put that somewhere safe. Um, and what I've done is when I cut this out, I actually cut 
just a little bit around the edge and you can see that that embossing glaze gives it that lovely glossy edge and I like to do this when I'm painting in with watercolours because it makes it so much easier which I'll demonstrate in a minute. So also what I want to do is just take some bits of book pages and I love layering up bits of old books and things. I think it gives texture to a page. So what I'm going to do is just take off those edges and I only ever use books that I found that are going to go into a landfill because a lot of old books with hardback covers actually they can't be recycled because of the, the way they're put together so I don't like things to be thrown away so I'd rather just use them for my crafting. So here we go we've got some nice bits here and I think, let's straighten that up. Andrea likes your fussy cutting. <laughs> Andrea likes my fussy cutting. Thank you very much. <laughs> I do like leaving a little bit of an edge and I do enjoy a bit of cutting out. Now, I also want to do is I want to create these like cigar shapes. Okay. Um, these are just tubes and I think they give an added dimension and height to what we're doing. So let me just put those to one side and I'll, I'll just use this to demonstrate. So I'm just going to use um, a small paintbrush. You can use a pencil but it makes really big tubes that can get squashed and then you're going to need a bit of um, glue. This is um, acrylic glue of ours that we haven't actually released yet but um, I'm sure you will have a favourite glue. Of course you can use tape across the bottom if you prefer um, but I'm just going to put just a little strip of glue around there and all you have to do is just roll it up. I've just made sure that I've got you know those um, rough edges there so that there's nothing too straight about it at all. There we go and just make sure it's nicely stuck I like that coming out there and then you just take your pencil or pen or whatever you brush out and also what I've done is I've also where's my other brush gone oh there it is in the water pot of course it is okay so what I've also done is taken a little bit of luscious and just touch the edges with it as if it's just come out of a book that is edged in in gold or something just to give it or it could be you know an ink or something like that so that's those bits okay and I've actually done quite a few and it's going to sit on the card or the journal page like this I do think it makes a nice textural background. I'm also going to do a bit of stamping as well. So I really like the the one on Conehead Daisy. And you've got a you are so kind, but underneath that you've got a thanks, um, an expression of appreciation or gratitude, acknowledgement of favours given. Thank you. And in these times I think we need to send a lot of thank you cards. So when it comes, it will be cut out, but those two are actually on a piece together. So just take your scissors and cut in between them. Okay, so I'm going to use Versafine again. And I'm also going to stamp with black onto some watercolour card and then heat emboss it but because you've seen me do that before I will just bring this one in. Now I like to rough up the edges as well so you can use a paper rougher upper, a scorer or you can just use a pair of scissors please be careful with this but I, I do like to just rough up the edges there just to so it's not quite as neat and then I'm going to come in and use let me just bring this in a little bit now I'm going to be using some different colors because I've got the black ground in blue and you notice I used three different colors here I tend to only stick to three, generally speaking, if I just want to make sure that it's going to be coordinated. But opposite on the colour wheel is going to be your warm colours. So I've actually chosen um, 
the new bottle sunshine which i am totally in love with at the moment it is really just such a happy color and um, i just think this is just gorgeous and we need happy colors at the moment we really do so i'm using bottle sunshine and again i'm doing exactly what i did before which is i'm taking a wet brush I'm dipping it into the pigment, taking a nice big chunk, and then I'm taking it to my palette. But again, you can use um, an old plate or or anything that you've got that you can just put, I nearly went in my tea then, <laughs> that you can put into your drawer and then you can reconstitute it later. But an old plate is, is good actually, an old plain white plate. Or um, a tile, I've got old tiles that I use quite a lot. So this is watermelon, it's that gorgeous, gorgeous colour. And these are all duotone colours, so depending on the light that's hitting it. So I'm just cleaning my brush so I don't cross-contaminate those colours in the palette. So, um, do I use Rosy Glow? I think I only use those two colours actually. I will put a bit of rosy glow in there as well. Okay, have Craft Stash got some rosy glow, Alfie? I have no idea. Craft Stash have got a really good range of colours and they always um, restock regularly. So if they haven't got something that you really want, they're really nice people. I'm sure they will um, get it in for you. We can always arrange that. Okay, so that's Rosy Glow. So I'm going to change, I'm going to keep with this brush and I'm going to do the thanks. So I'm going to just wet it first of all, because when you wet it, it just makes it move really easily. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of watermelon and then I'm going to put a little bit of this bottle sunshine which is gorgeous <laughs> i'm laughing because juki is um is here getting a cuddle off alfie and can you see that it is pulling away from all of that embossed color embossed um words i should say and if it needs a bit of help just take your brush and just mop up a little bit but that's going to dry beautifully there okay so um so alfie has got another question Abby says how many colors of luscious do you have and can you mix powders to create new shades okay so how many colors of luscious do we have i think we have currently about 50 are we yeah. something like that uh, approximately 50 with lots more coming out this year because i'm working on some brand new pigments that um I've never been seen before um, so that's going to be fantastic but also they are limitless because you can actually start mixing your own colours um, and I don't know whether you can see on here let me just bring my lid in so you can see I already mix them so what I'll, I've done is I've actually put a sticker over the top I then paint it with the colour and then when it's dry I put the name on let me turn it around so you can see that and then when I actually start mixing, like bullfinch and quail, um, peacock and quail, bullfinch and blackbird, I will then actually then label that up as well. But absolutely you can. And I would highly recommend that you make yourself or get yourself a really nice little sketchbook that you can use just to um, do your colour swatches in. So because Jacob says 54 old and new. <laughs> Sue Jacob is a star. She's just come in and said 54, including old and new. You are an angel, Sue. Sue is one of our um, bluebirds, which is the design team members. Um, and yeah, she's um, <laughs> she knows her stuff. And Andrea and Jan have asked where, where they can get the palette from. Andrea and Jan. Hi, Andrea and Jan. So you can get the palette from Craft Stash. Um, and it's under a Probably Tim Holtz, um, that's what it's called, isn't it? It's a Tim Holtz palette. Yeah, it's a Tim Holtz palette. And not like me, spell it correctly. I can't spell palette correctly. <laughs> I know, I know, it's bad, isn't it? Go on then, how do you spell palette, Alfie? It's P-A-L, one L. It's one L, P-A-L, two Ts. Um, but yeah. 
Alfie's just checking out um, the website for the moment for you. I'm just telling you exactly where it is. But it's um, completely brilliant because um, if, well, the days when we used to be able to go out, it was brilliant because I could just take this in the caravan with me. I wouldn't have to take my big pots. I would just make sure it was full of all colours. Um, and then I would go off and just take that with me. I don't think um, they have so, to, so they might have to get it from us. Okay, so they might not have it in stock. So if they don't have it in stock and are not stocking it, we do have stock of it on our website at indigoblue.com because um, we, we definitely have some. Okay, so what I'm doing now is... Shireen says... Duke loves his cuddles as he's sitting on Alfie's lap again. <laughs> Duke loves his cuddles as he's sitting on Alfie's lap again. Actually, Duke is a bit too big to sit on Alfie's lap. It's normally Daisy that sits on his lap. Duke is um, a black um, flat coat retriever. He's a rescue dog. And um, Daisy is a Romanian rescue dog. We don't know what she is, but she's definitely cute. And Heinz 57, and she definitely can sit on Alfie's lap. Um, when we've had our dinner, they can actually hear when we put our knives and forks down. And that's when they come into the dining room and go, okay, can I have a cuddle now? And she jumps up on Daisy on Alfie's lap. It's so cute. <laughs> so, I think she's just not wanting a cuddle. I think she wants to see whether he's got any food left on his plate, which never happens. Andrea's just uh, commented about the spelling of palate. Um, it is one L, two T's, but it has got an E on the end. <laughs> the way she's spelling pallet is for a pallet, like a wooden pallet. Oh, wooden pallet. No, no. Yeah, so it's spelled P A L E W T E. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the correct way of spelling it. Um, right, so what am I doing here? So I've mixed up my luscious so that it is the consistency of single cream. I don't know whether you can see that it, it holds onto the paintbrush really nicely and that gives me a really great payload of colour but also it means that it will still pull away from the lovely embossing powder that's uh, melted on there so it, it means that I don't have to be brilliant at colouring in um, she says so you can see that it will mix with the bottle sunshine that I've already put on there and if you want to mix it further say here you can just go over the top and it will literally mix in or if you want to add more wait until it's dry and then you can go in with more I think I might use a bit of rosy glow under here which is a bit of a darker area for the flower and I'm not being very clean about it i'm just really going for it because normally you know you would take your time and you'd really be in the zone and mindful about it i keep going for my tea it's not going to happen um so if you find that the color isn't strong enough i do sometimes when i'm teaching find that you know people are worried about using too much powder you've got absolutely loads in these these tubs here absolutely loads um, it's going to take you a long time to get through it so don't be shy of using plenty of color and mix it so that you've got a really nice thick you know single cream look to it or I think that's probably the best way of describing it Jackie wants to see a picture of Duke and Daisy okay do you want to just switch to switch to yeah, the face on the face on the okay I'm going to switch to the face one um, I'm going to show you Duke and Daisy. Oh my God, that's the really untidy bit of the craft room. Okay, here we go. You ready? Ooh. There's, there's Alfie. Go on, wave Alfie. Duke, there he is. There he is. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yeah, and there's Daisy over, over there. The Can you chair. see her? There she is on the chair with her cushion having a yawn. This, there's a treat on top of the treat box there in front of you, Alfie, so you can have a little treat. She probably won't. 
Oh, oh no, she's dropped it. Not bothered. Not bothered. Too busy. <laughs> Too busy sleeping. Oh no, she's eating it. Duke will never say no, will you? Here you go. There he is. Hello, darling. Hello. Yes, I know. Okay. Back, back up. Work. Back. Back to work. <laughs> work yeah right <laughs> this is the best work ever okay so as i said um um if it's looking a bit too thin like this here all you need to do is just add a little bit more luscious or what i'm doing is i'm just mixing it in got sarita from okay. india watching sarita from india hello 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 Oh, we miss going to India. I tell you, we really do. Um, tell us where you're from, um, what area. But yes, we um, we do tours to India. If you if you didn't know, um, but obviously we're not going at the moment. Um, but that's in Rajasthan at the moment, um, Jaipur and surrounding areas, and we will be going to other places in the future when we can go back to it. Okay, so you can just carry on for as long as you want doing this and just mixing the colours, putting extra highlights in. I really like using um, the white sparkle magic here. This is fantastic. So this is just a white one, but the sparkle in it is incredible. I mean, it's just amazing it's like pure sparkle it's what we use to yeah add a sparkle to any medium whether we want to you know add it to a paint or whatever so if we want it ultra sparkly we can actually just use this it's um a slightly thicker grain um it's not quite as fine but the lovely thing is that it will give you the most delicious highlights um just wait till this dries so just a tiny bit goes a long way um it's just really great for little highlights just on the tips or just down the center of some of the petals there and that will just look amazing okay so that beautiful and it's so nice to do. What lovely colours are those? Oh yeah, let's just do a little bit of green at the bottom. So this is, um, let me just check, yeah, green apple. So just a tiny bit of green down here. We'll just finish that off. And then it's a case of let's have a, a play at putting things together. Okay, so glue at the ready. Let's put the lids on the luscious, then I don't knock them over. Glue at the ready. I normally put that in the tub halfway down. Right, so let's go in with, start some layers, shall we? Now I want to centre on this uh, middle bit here. I don't want to scatter things all over. I normally go from corner to corner, but I'm, or I might be this way round in the middle but because this is a journal page my journal is, is predominantly portrait this is what I'm sticking to so I'm just gonna go straight in with um, you can use your slap it on mat for this but I don't want that to cover any of the areas of the background at all which are nice and um, sparkly and luscious so that's why I'm using an acrylic glue so, do we, do we have a really red luscious powder, Margaret? Says? Yeah, we do have a really red luscious powder. A um, a true um, red is raspberry, which is this colour here. Okay, that's the closest you're going to get to a, a true red. So, with these, I'm just going to put a line across here, and I think I'll use a little bit of cardboard packaging. There we go, just to add that extra texture and it goes really well with these. So I think I might space these out a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Always go for an odd number. 
So normally I would take a little bit more time over this, but because we are on a time limit, I'm going to go with and you can see the edges I've just coloured ever so slightly and the good thing about um, using a glue is that you have got time to mess around with it for a bit because um, I don't like the fact that they're not straight. Can you use luscious powder to paint on glass, wood or metal charms? Okay, so can you use luscious to paint on glass, wood or metal charms? The quick answer is yes. Um, the slow answer is um, uh, metal, um, wood and glass. I do actually um, gesso first because then it gives it a really good key. Um, glass, it would um, scratch off unless you actually use a glass slap it on, which will be coming out very shortly, um, next month or so. I uh, don't remember the date, but um, that will be coming shortly so that you will actually be able to use it on glass um, without it scratching off. Okay, I think we're, we're nearly there with that. Stop faffing around, okay? There we go. Yes, I like that. Um, I think that's going to go there. And this, let's move that up a bit. Because this is going to go here. Okay, so uh, I'm just putting this on a bit of foam pad because I like the fact that it's going to sit on. And we remember we actually use the same colours in the flowers on here and then it coordinates. And I've used the same colour on the edges of the tubes as well so that gives it the same sort of colour as well and just to make sure that those are nice and secure I'm going to go in there with a bit of glue because I've been messing about with it quite a bit oh they're already stuck that's good and then just to finish off um, I'm just going to show you some uh, answer that other, that question about the wood metal and glass okay when i've finished this so just bear with me for a couple more seconds after i've finished this page and then and the acrylic this is acrylic glue so it does actually yeah kay said before finished. it's on craft stash but if if she wants to go to indigo blue um, yeah, Kay says they're not on craft stash. That's right, Kay. Sorry about that. Um, they mustn't be stocking them at the moment, but they are available on indigoblue.com and we can help you with that. Okay, you can order them off there. So that's my finished journal piece. I'm really happy with that. Um, and even though it has got some structure in it, I don't mind that going into my journal because I like my journals quite chunky. Um, but this could very easily be a card for you. Um, no problem at all. So in answer to your question about using Luscious, um, I am going to be doing lots of other um, Facebook Lives, but if you want to get more techniques, you can have a look at our Indigo Blue Facebook Lives and there's a whole stash of um, lessons there. We have four different lessons using uh, luscious techniques and they run from about Christmas into January and I just wanted to show you this. These, All these elements are actually stuck on with the super thick. Super thick slap it on actually acts as a really strong glue as well and these are all metal by the way and they are not coming off. I, I've done these a few years ago um, and the the feet are actually stuck on with super thick. I actually put loads on, left it like that overnight um, and they're stuck fast. I've then used a gesso on these um, all over to give it a key. I've actually used black gesso for this and then I've actually used my lovely luscious just to decorate these and they stick to the um, gesso really really well and just remember that they have actually got a binder in them so they actually will stick really well um, and they don't scratch off you know because they've got that binder in and they work really really nicely so you know you can just touch up different areas of them um, 
and it just will highlight different bits or you can do it one plain color or whatever so you can see that it could be see i haven't even finished this one look i'm still going at it um so some of this base is wood uh some of these are plaster some of them are, are actually plastic um some of these are metal i know that one's metal this one's resin so this has got everything on it and of course you're covering up the slap ton as well which is an acrylic so you can actually use it on loads and loads of different things i've actually used the slap it on super thick and the luscious on a t-shirt through a stencil and i was amazed that it actually did look fantastic and it was quite fluid and i was able to wash it at 30 degrees um, do not put it in the dryer because that's exactly what i did to test it and it doesn't like the dryer it cracked but if you just um, use it um, on 30 degrees fantastic so there's loads and loads of things that you can do with luscious so i really hope you've enjoyed our hour we are actually going to be with you now um, once a month with craft stash so um, you can tune in um, it's going to be on a wednesday at four o'clock once a month and also you can catch us on indigo blue as well on a monday at four so thank you so very much for joining us and i'll say goodbye to some of the people on here kate margaret jackie wendy joe thank you all so very very much for tuning in it's lovely to see remember 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 if you want to win all these gorgeous stamps here all you have to do is comment and share so quickly put your comments in and quickly hit that share button for in a chance to win all four of these gorgeous stamps and remember to go onto craft stash's website um, and and give it a like if you've really enjoyed this um youtube this uh facebook live Thank you so much, everybody. Say bye, Alfie. Bye. Bye from Duke and Daisy. Bye, everybody. Bye.